Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a video that is a little bit different compared to what I usually do. Today we're looking at some of the most cruel torture methods ever devised. No games, no movies, but real horrors today. The Brazen Ball. This first torture method is actually seen in one of the Saw movies, and it's something that you guys recommended in the last video. The Brazen Bull was first developed in ancient Greece and is not only a horrific torture device, but a really weird spectacle for anyone watching. Also sometimes called the Bronze Bull, is a large hollowed out statue with a door on the bottom where the victim would enter. Then a fire would be lit underneath. The person inside would have indescribable amounts of pain as they would be slowly cooked alive. But here's the first twist. There are a couple of twists to this story. Guys, it just gets weirder and weirder, trust me. There are horns on the inside which lead to the outside, warping the screams of the person being cooked to sound like a bull's angry bellowing. Seriously, what kind of a sick f comes up with this kind of stuff? Not just any sick f The inventor was a guy named Perilous. Parallels? No, no last name. When he designed the bowl, he allegedly said that when the human smoke comes out of this thing, it rises like a cloud of incense. No. When he presented his invention in Sicily to Pal Pal Palaris? No last name? He told them his screams will come to you through the pipes as the tenderest, most pathetic, most melodious of bellowings. Pathetic? I don't think that word is used correctly here. Now, the inventor actually believed that everybody would be amazed by this death trap and he would receive many awards and money. But the opposite was true. To absolutely nobody's surprise, even people back then were disgusted. To test out the invention, Phalaris told Perilous, the maker, to get inside. Once he entered, they locked the door on him and started lighting a fire underneath, leading to horrific screams emerging from the bowl. But before he could die, they took him out and threw him off a cliff. They spared him just so they could kill him in a more humane way, as any good leader would. The Judas Cradle. This one is more than a little bit odd. In medieval Europe, there were quite a few new inventions which blew people away. For the first time, there were compasses, clocks, windmills, and torture methods which still shock people to this day. This is one of them. The Judas Cradle is a metallic or wooden pyramid invented in 16th century Spain. It was designed to make the process of dying extremely painful and lengthy so you would have enough time to extract information from the person being tortured. So this pyramid is inserted in your... I mean, it's inserted in your pooper. Don't even ask where they put this thing if you're a woman. Your own weight would slowly push you down lower and lower over the next few days, which resulted in extreme pain. How is this any different than doing anal? If that wasn't enough, weights would be added to push you down even further. If you refused to give up the needed information, some dude would raise you up and drop you down to their heart's content, or shake you around, making the experience even more painful often resulting in death by impalement. Now, some people would survive this torture method, but not for long as they would die by infection a few days later at best. The Iron Chair If you think your crappy office chair is uncomfortable, think again. The Iron Chair or Chinese Torture Chair is covered in metal spikes. This device was also developed in medieval Europe. The person unfortunate enough to be subjected to this torture method would be seated on here and the spikes would slowly drive into their skin. There are cuffs and different bars restraining your chest, legs and arms so that there is no way for you to escape. Much like with the Judas Cradle, your own body weight would slowly push you deeper in, or if that didn't work, you would simply be tied down even tighter. However, there's something else that makes this method especially evil. Not only would you have to sit on this chair, but you would also be over an open flame. See, this device is made of brass, making it perfect for you to be roasted alive on it. Once you sat down, the chair would be pushed closer and closer to an open flame. Now, one thing that I noticed is that there are many more spikes than you would realistically need. I'm pretty sure that this is because once you're over an open flame, your body would out of reflex, jerk and jump around slamming into the spikes on the sides. A lot of the versions I saw were also pretty rusty. Maybe that's because they're very old. Maybe that was intentional. In some variations, there was a hole in the seat where you could add more burning coals. This device was used mostly for murderers, adulterers, 
and suspected witches? Interestingly enough though, the true effectiveness didn't come from you sitting on the chair. In most cases, this device was used to extract a confession out of you, but you wouldn't be put in it directly. First, you would have to watch someone else get tortured, and that psychological aspect was usually what got people talking. It's the threat of it alone that worked. Bamboo torture. For this one, we're moving away from the European methods and more in the directions of Asia. Bamboo torture was commonly used in China, Japan, and India throughout the 19th century, which, if you think about it, isn't even that long ago. This torture method relies on the growth of live plants, more specifically bamboo. That's because bamboo is one of the fastest growing plants on the planet. It can rise up to 35 inches a day, which is just about one and a half inches an hour. After World War II, some allied prisoners of war would be subjected to this punishment in Japan. First, the victim would be tied very securely over a bamboo shoot, and then the very sharp plant would, over the next few days, very aggressively grow through the flesh and come out on the other side. Now there's one thing to be said about this, there is not that much evidence that proves this method was actually used and historical accounts strongly vary. However, there are several documents from that time period which mention bamboo torture. Also, its feasibility alone was proven on the TV show Mythbusters, where a bamboo plant grew through some ballistic gel, which mimics the human body. Even though none of the plants emerged at the top, they were firmly stuck inside and did go several inches deep, which I think is bad enough. And honestly, with a little bit of human assistance, I'm sure you can get them to come out on the other side. The issue is that to penetrate the entire torso, bamboo would not only need to grow quickly, but also with a lot of upward force, which it has to some degree, but it's not like it can't be stopped. That's also why it took a few days for it to just grow halfway into the body. Water torture. This is one of the most unique forms of torture that I've ever heard of. Unlike all the other methods that we've had up to now, this is more of a psychological punishment. It goes like this. A person's head is fixed in a position and then slowly drips of cold water are dropped on the scalp. I remember hearing about this in elementary school and some guy convinced me that it can actually carve a hole in your head. That is total nonsense, but a prolonged exposure to this process can cause severe mental deterioration. And the reason why is quite interesting. The idea came from a lawyer who observed that over time, water dripping on a stone would create a hole in it. The people subjected to this torture method often knew this, and because of the mysterious nature of this idea, they would be driven insane by the belief that a small hole is being hollowed out in their skull. Of course, now we know this doesn't work, but honestly, I don't doubt that this was some extremely effective mental torment back in the day. It's not exactly clear if this really originates from China, or if that's just the name given to this process to make it sound more mysterious. I'll refer to Mythbusters once again because they dedicated an episode to this and the results were very interesting. They built a setup where for several hours someone could have water dripped on their head. Originally when they tried it out, it was very effective, but mostly because you had your head locked in place. That was the worst part of it. But then the crew received a mysterious anonymous email stating that the mistake they made was using a constantly dripping source of water. What this person allegedly found much more effective during his own experimentation was that you need to randomize when the drops fall down, and that the anticipation makes it far worse. And he was right. What's so strange about this email is that the person wrote that this was according to his experience. Was this just a cruel joke, or did it really come from a person who did this to people? Rat torture. I'm sure many of you know this one, maybe you've even used it yourself. I hope not. Rat torture is the process of encouraging vermin to attack the victim. This particular method was allegedly used in the Tower of London. There are several different approaches to rat torture. One of the most common is to have a couple of rats in a pottery bowl and place them on the prisoner's abdomen. A hot piece of charcoal would be placed on top of the pot and the rats, desperate to escape the heat, would gnaw into the bowels. And as primitive as this seems, it was used in Brazil during a military dictatorship between 1964 and 1985, and even in Chile up to 1990. This isn't some ancient technique, it was basically used like last week. It was a quite versatile form of torture, as it could be used in many different ways. Sometimes you just needed to 
leave the dude's arm exposed through some type of hole and apparently rats would start eating it while you're still alive. This is especially gross because rats are just so foul. I know I've seen ratatouille and they can seem nice but seriously this is like the, one of the most rank animals out there. They're dirty, they carry diseases like salmonella, they hang out in the sewer and in the garbage and in those restaurants from kitchen nightmares. Then that filthy thing starts crawling around in your festering wound, the rack. As some of you know, I recently covered Outlast 2, and this torture method appears in the game. There's also a version of it in the Saw movies, but it's a little different. As it turns out, it's inspired by real life. The rack, much like the brazen bull, was invented in ancient Greece. It consists of some kind of board and a roller with a ratchet mechanism, allowing for movement in one direction but not the other. The victim would be fixed to the board and their ankles would be tied to a rope, which was fixed to the roller. Very slowly the roller was moved further away from the prisoner, causing extreme stretching on the shoulders, hips, knees and elbows. This causes excruciating pain, obviously, and eventually all the joints would in your body would just pop out. At this point, if you would continue stretching, they would be completely separated, leaving only the connective muscles between them. However, if you would still continue stretching it, the muscles would stop functioning and would no longer expand or contract properly, and probably eventually rip. It doesn't say that in the source, but I mean, I think that's a safe assumption. Much like with what we see in Outlast 2, it was typically used to either get a confession or a desperately needed piece of information. What to me is the worst part about the rack is that people would oftentimes survive. Like with the brazen bull, after some time you're just going to be completely cooked until there's nothing left of you, but here? There are a few accounts which state the same thing. If you survive, you would no longer be able to walk all your limbs would be rendered useless and you would have to be carried to your next torture destination. The Swedish drink. There's a reason why I put this one towards the very end. The Swedish drink is probably the grossest torture method on this entire list as it involves eating excrement. Also sometimes called the Swedish recipe, it was used frequently between 1618 and 1648. At first I thought it was made by the Germans, which I would have believed because everyone knows they're perverts, but German people in this case were more often than not the victims. During the Thirty Years' War, it was used on peasants and civilians to hand over money, food, animals, and women? Am I reading this right? It was sort of a method of force feeding where a wooden wedge was inserted into the mouth to keep it open, and then an entire bucket full of foul liquid was poured into the stomach using a large funnel. The victims were often restrained so they couldn't fight back, and the liquids were sometimes heated to a boiling temperature. I mean, even though that must hurt even more, doesn't that kill some of the bacteria? Either way, it sounds like it sucks. Maybe you can get it at Ikea. This would often result in illness and infection. No shit. Not only was this really disgusting for obvious reasons, but also the sheer amount, like the volume of liquid, was typically so much that it caused intense gastric pain as your organs would have to drastically expand. So those were some of the most evil torture methods. In case I missed your favorite technique, let me know which ones you would have included. I know this was a very different video from what I usually do, but I like experimenting with different things. As always, I hope you liked it. If you did, smash like, smash subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.